Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Green Bay Rewind. Thank you so much for being here, hanging out with me. Uh, super excited to get into the week. Anytime you can come into the week after a victory, it's going to be a good week. You guys probably all thought, hey, we might be getting two giveaways this week on the show. And then Brandon McManus and Malik Willis and Jaden Reed said, psych, you get one. Uh, but I don't think anyone's complaining about that. Um, Yeah, let's let's check in. Let's see where everyone's watching from. We got Corey coming in right away. Um, and actually, before I get into check-ins, I made an addition. You know, last week I was like, man, I, I see a lot of same people coming in week in and week out. I also see a lot of new faces, which is great. Um, so I wanted to add something. You know, there's a lot of people that I appreciate that are in here week in and week out. So now we got like a little streak ticker on the bottom. This is based off of giveaways. I know people watch that don't always enter the giveaways or don't enter the giveaways at all. Uh, like my guy Casey in, in Phoenix. I know he doesn't enter giveaways. And then I have family that checks in. So it's not 100% accurate. But I, I got, you know, I got the ticker going on, the uh, the streaks of people who are coming in watching. So I appreciate you guys being here. Let's see who's here. We got Corey checking in. New Ulm. I don't even need to look. I know where Corey's living now. New Ulm, Minnesota. Corey, um, I do see that you have your son, Logan, joining. Logan, thank you for joining in. Appreciate you being here as well. Corey, I was going to tell you, I, I forgot about this last week. There was a pizza place in Green Bay called Pepper Boy Pizza. It was like a very uh, small hole in the wall place. It was like word of mouth only. You could only order it online and then you'd park in this parking lot and they're just like bring it out to you. It's kind of like really hush hush. There's no signage. It's it kind of uh, if you knew, you knew and otherwise you didn't know. Well, they just relocated to New Ulm, Minnesota. So if you like pizza, it's like wood fired pizzas. It's pretty good. Uh, I, I'm a little bit of a pickier eater. So their sauce had, it was a little bit chunkier of a sauce, which was a little weird for me, but it was a good spot. But if you like wood-fired pizzas and you're not a super picky eater, I definitely recommend Pepper Boy P Pizza since it is now in your neck of the woods. It sounded like he moved there because he had a family emergency or something, so I opened up shop there. Anyway, <laughs> sorry for that side detour, but I was just thinking about it that I forgot to do that last week. Uh, we got Ron coming in from Appleton. Good to see you again, Ron. Appreciate you being here. Uh, my boy Tully, looking forward to hanging out this weekend. Uh, hopefully, we can get a, get some time to to get together. Um, yeah, four days until you're in Green Bay. Looking forward to it, man. It's going to definitely be a, a wet, wild one. Casey, good to see you, buddy. Um, how about Freddie Freeman? I, I'm not sure who Freddie Freeman is. Maybe I should know. I, I have no idea. Uh, good to see you, though, Steve um let's see it's not nicole it's heather i'm pretty sure that's your alt account so uh heather good to see you from knoxville sway coda good to see you as always we got derek checking again from south dakota appreciate you being here derek i think that's three weeks uh in a row now for you appreciate it might be more i could be wrong uh ch -ch -ch. joe good to see you um jimbo always good to see you man appreciate you guys being here and then we got roger Roger, coming in from Lion Country. Should be an interesting week for you. I uh, appreciate you guys checking in. So let's get into the let's get into the matchup. Um, you know, we have uh the Packers coming in hot with another victory. Uh hot in probably more than one ways, considering it was very, very warm and muggy in Jacksonville. But the Packers advance to six and two uh with the defeat over the Jaguars or the victory over the Jaguars, I should say. Beat them 30 to 27. Uh Jaguars advance to two and six. Now, Jaguars are kind of odd. I know everyone expected us to beat the brakes out of them or beat the brakes off of them. Packers just are notoriously bad at playing in Florida, it seems. Florida and California is just not their place to play. We saw that there. And I, I do think Jacksonville is better than what their record is. I know everyone was like, hey, we should have beat them by more. It's like, it's the NFL. That doesn't generally happen too often. Sure, it can happen. You know, we saw that when we played the Cardinals, we kind of, we crushed their spirits nicely. But generally, that doesn't happen in the NFL. You need a few breaks to go your way. Uh, you need a lot of good things to go your way for that to happen. And most games are going to be close. It's the reason why Vegas, I think, had the odds at like three and a half points. It's not going to be a blowout. Even though they came in only winning two games, they still 
have a lot of weapons. We saw Trevor Lawrence look great. He made a lot of big time throws against the Packers. And that's just kind of how it goes. You know, there's playmakers on both sides. Everyone gets paid. Uh, and, you know, look around the NFL last weekend. You had the Rams beat the Vikings. Patriots beat the Jets, which if the honeymoon wasn't over in New York, it's it's definitely over now. And then the Browns upsetting the Ravens. So, yes, you should win. The Packers did win, but I don't think it's I don't think it's fair to expect a team to just to blow the brakes off of all these different teams, even if they are a lesser opponent in your eyes, just because that doesn't work that way in the NFL. Now, some teams can do it consistently. Uh, we've seen the Lions do it twice now this season, at least that I know of. I could be missing other opportunities, but yeah, nonetheless, it was a it was a good game. Shaved another couple more years off my life. I'm I'm thinking. Um, welcome to Green Bay, Brandon McManus. Uh, it's definitely another uh, looking like another stellar Gutekunst move. I did see Andres Carlson banged another 50 yarder uh, in San Francisco, which was never his issue in Green Bay. He could make big kicks like that. He just struggles with extra points. And we saw him miss extra point last week with the 49ers. But, you know, I know Goot kind of said, maybe I moved on a little bit too quick from Anders. Uh, maybe I'm a little bit too impatient with special teams. But, hey, at least he didn't At least he didn't keep uh, Braden uh, Narvison around longer than he should have. He saw another opportunity to improve this roster. Brought in Brandon McManus, who's now made two big kicks to win two games. So, Super happy to have him. Um, you know, I'm not looking to jinx anyone or anything like that. So I'm just happy that he's in Green Bay. Uh, but when he comes out on the field, I definitely feel a little bit more confident in the kick, right? Br when Braden would come out, it was like, oh, geez, you know, here we go. He could have some that went right down the middle. And then that 40 yard spot out, he just seemed like he over kicked it. So happy to have Brandon. Uh, it's definitely. Uh, saved the stress levels for me, I think, a little bit. Kind of speaking of some good pickups here, how fortunate are we to have Malik Willis on this team? What an incredible backup to be able to come in, look so poised, went four for five for 56 yards, including that big one to uh, read for 51 of those 56 yards. And, of course, that touchdown to, to uh, Kraft. Man, Love went down. You obviously don't want to see that. I think if the Packers wanted him to, he probably could have finished out the game. I know Matt said that they weren't able to protect him and they wanted to avoid potentially doing any more harm, which is fair. Uh, you have a long season ahead of you. You don't want to rush the process by any, by any means. But I know some people are trying to say QB controversy in Green Bay. It's certainly not the case. Uh, I love Malik. Very thankful that he's on the team, but there's no no way that uh, Malik is taking Jordan's job right now. He's definitely stepped up big when we've needed him, but the situations we've needed him uh, to come in, he's never been in a hole, right? He's always been able to play to his strengths of taking off when the play's not there. He's never had to force anything. He's never had to try to climb this, you know, mount this comeback against a team. Um, so the sample size that we've seen Malik in this offense is so small, such a great addition to this team, but there's no chance that he's taking Jordan's job right now. Now, is that to say it, it couldn't happen in the future? Absolutely not. But there's no chance right now. If Jordan continues to linger with injuries and, and Malik keeps stepping in and Malik keeps making big plays and, and keeps winning, then maybe it's something they reassess. But as of right now, there's no chance. Uh, there is no chance. Love Malik. Uh, but right now, Jordan's definitely the quarterback uh, for this franchise. The throws Jordan can make, so so impressive. And, and only a handful of quarterbacks can make those. Now, got to stay healthy, got to stay on the field. But I don't think that's going to be an issue at all with Jordan. You know, we've had a couple uh, couple dings this year. But uh, all in all, it's not nothing too concerning. Uh, but I do love Malik's playing style. You know, it's so different than loves. It makes that run game so much more explosive, right? We saw, uh, the times where he did drop back defenders have to now expect him to take off because Malik does get going. So they now have to bring in spies. They have to have extra eyes on Malik, which could potentially open up stuff, opens up stuff for Josh Jacobs. We saw him have a big run with Malik in there. <clears throat> and then we saw that play action with Kraft where he was just able to walk in. 
Um, yeah, I mean, that it's definitely nice change of pace. Now, I'd rather have Jordan, a healthy Jordan Love playing any day, but it's nice to, I feel like in the last few years, anytime uh, a backups potentially had to come in, it was always kind of like nerve wracking if we, if we were to encounter that. So it's nice to not have to deal with that the same way. Um, speaking of, uh, tight ends, happy national tight end day, Tucker Craft. Uh, he just continues to excel in the role. Finished the day, three receptions for 78 yards and that touchdown that we referenced uh, from Malik. He does so much in this offense, and it's so nice that he's finally kind of starting to get that recognition around the NFL. I'm super excited for when Luke comes back and maybe some of these plays that we can see with both of them on the field because I think I think they both bring so much to the offense. It seems like Tucker's kind of pulling away as that, that definitely uh, – big target tight end for this team and it's been a long time since we've had that on this team thinking maybe back to 2016 with jared cook um was that was that the last time that we had that vertical tight end that could really make make it a a defense pay and then probably prior to that was jermichael finley um so it's 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 a nice pace a nice change of pace i should say to have tucker craft in this offense and what he can bring he loves to hit defense uh he loves to make big blocks and he loves to uh make defensive backs pay for trying to tackle him and that's what you want out of a tight end super uh, nice to have on the team and then of course uh offensively we talked about josh jacobs as well have yourself a day josh jacobs finish of the day 25 carries for 127 yards and two touchdowns including his season long 38 yard run uh, for that touchdown uh, would have been more obviously if we went to had some of those penalties early on in the game he had some big runs that immediately got called back for um, a couple different things but you know on that 138 yard touchdown run the thing that I, I saw that I love seeing and I, I think Christian Watson gets so much flack from some Packer fans but you watch that play Watson's downfield just blocking a dude if Watson's not taking his role that serious, that's not a touchdown. Watson blocking dudes downfield, holds his block, maintains his block, sees that Josh bounces outside, and then continues the block to create that lane for him. He doesn't always show up in the receptions, right? We have a lot of weapons on offense. Everyone's going to get their share. He doesn't always show up on the stat line. But Christian does not complain at all. He goes into the trenches. He's he's getting you know, getting dirty, doing the busy work and very thankless work. Uh, But I know I appreciate it. I'm sure you guys do as well. Let's kind of check some comments here. I'm sure, I'm sure I've missed, uh, I'm sure I've missed some comments here as I was uh, walking through here. Tony, good to see you. Yeah. People kept calling it a trap game. I I don't think there are obviously going to be some situations in the NFL where trap games happen, but they are, you know, Jacksonville is a good team too. Just because your record doesn't say that, you know, they have good playmakers. We saw the good playmakers. Uh, oh, Chad, thank you for that. Google Google Doc link. Appreciate you, man. I know last time I yelled at you. I just dropped that. So uh, if you have not um, been here before, there is a form link. Fill out that form. Uh, that's for the giveaway that we'll do uh, in a couple segments. Please, I'm going to drop it multiple times throughout the uh, episode. Please only enter in one time, uh, one time per person. Now, um, Corey, I know you said you're with Logan. As long as it's not becoming an issue where people are just like putting in a bunch of random people and and trying to bump up their odds, um, I'm okay if you enter Logan in as well. Um, Like I said, as long as it's not an issue, if I start seeing people coming in here with like four or five people, then I might shut that down. But right now, if it's just... You know, I like I know the Tullys watch together. So like people like that I know are gonna be in a week out. Um I, I trust I trust you here. Uh, but if it becomes an issue, then I'll have to kind of shut that down. So feel free to enter in Logan there as well. Um yeah, Jimbo brought up a good point. Jordan struggled definitely moving there after that groin injury. I thought he retweaked the knee. I don't know if it's a good thing that it was a, a groin injury as opposed to a knee, uh, but it's, you know, that definitely helped to bring in Malik to have that quarterback that could move around. Um, Kraft yak and cheese. I know, I know Corey uh, or Corey uh, Chad's been saying that for weeks now. I'm glad to see. I don't, 
Chad, I don't know if you uh, coined that term. If you did, you should have trademarked it because now it's blown up everywhere. What a great nickname. Uh, Derek, nailing on the head as always. Watson's been a good team guy for the targets he gets, for sure. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Um, as we're kind of continuing to talk about this game, one guy that I've been talking about every single week that I feel should come onto this field on defense and never leave. Uh, he should never be subbed out. He should play a hundred percent of snaps is Edrin Cooper. I don't care whose job he has to take. Uh, that dude is a freak. We saw him. We saw him, uh, obviously get the strip sack on Trevor Lawrence that Devonte, uh, Devonte. Yeah. Devonte Wyatt, right? Devonte. Yes. Devonte Wyatt. I'm pretty sure on that. Um, it doesn't sound right, but I'm pretty sure it's Devonte Wyatt. There's a lot of, you know, uh, we had Devondre Campbell, Devonte Adams, Devonte White. There's a lot of those like different, uh, different names and um, different ways of pronouncing those names, I should say. So we had Devonte White just kind of hip check the offensive lineman out of the way, recover that fumble. But along with that, along with that uh, uh, force fumble, that strip sack, that play where as the linebacker. Christian Kirk got by him and he took off and was able to catch up to Christian Kirk and break up that pass 50 yards downfield blew my freaking mind. There is no world in which a linebacker should be able to drop like that and get that closing speed on a wide receiver of all people. Um, absolutely mind blown. He just plays with such instinct that I I don't want to ever see him leave the field. I think he should be in every single snap, every single play. Um, you know, if he's that good, put him in offense too. I don't know. He is just unbelievable. And you, of course, can't talk about turnovers without talking about Xavier McKinney. Xavier has six interceptions down the season. I did look at the franchise records 10. That happened back in like 1950s. Um, so they played a lot fewer games, of course. So to get 10 in uh, that shorter span back then is, is pretty impressive. But, you know, at this pace, Xavier has a real chance of, uh, of beating that franchise record for interceptions in a season, which would be incredible. Uh, I'm starting to think that the uh, quick trip gift card I sent Joe Shane, the general manager of the New York Giants, isn't going to cut it. I, I think I don't know if I need to send him like a pizza to his office or something, but that's not going to cut it. Um, and then. You know, outside of Xavier and Edrim, there this this week was not a lot to boast about. It felt like uh, the defense was a weak link against Jacksonville. The second half, uh, you know, you saw receivers just continuously getting open. I don't know if they were playing soft zone the entire time. But, man, every time Trevor was trying to throw, guys were just by themselves. There was very little pass rush. So when we did send extra guys to try to blitz, to try to create some pass rush, it just made life a lot easier for Trevor. I, I don't know what's going on with the pass rush. It's so weak in and weak out. Last week, we saw them wreak havoc against the uh, Texans. You know, you saw Stroud that couldn't do anything. Pass rush um, was generating pressure every single play, it felt like. And then this week, you really felt like you couldn't get anything. We had one sack, and that was the one produced by Edrin Cooper. At one point when we were up 10 with like under 10 minutes left to go in the fourth quarter, I thought, okay, this defense is going to stifle it. It's going it, to, you know, they're not going to be able to, to make anything happen on this. This game's going to be done for. And then it felt like they just let up 10 points super easily. Now they tightened up on the one to uh, cause a field goal. Uh, they almost got that fumble recovery on the bad snap, but you know, it just, it, this week just felt like an off week for some reason. I know Evan Williams went out like early or late in the, the first quarter. Um, and to the point where he went out, the Packers didn't let the, uh, the Jaguars get a single first down. And the second he went out, their offense started clicking. I don't know if Evan's that big of an intricate piece to this this defense if so i hope he's you know healthy and well rested uh for this weekend against the lions because they're definitely going to need them it uh 
it really showed his absence when he wasn't out there. I'll, I'll say that much. It just felt like a very frustrating second half of the game. Thankfully, we were able to come away with the victory. But yeah, and then the other kind of negative part of the game, of course, got to talk about is the injuries. We kind of talked about Evan Williams already left uh, late in the first quarter with an injury. Jordan Love left with a groin injury. Eric Stokes got injured on the last play. Jair got injured on the last uh, on the last play for defense. He had an MRI, which everything looked good. Josh Jacobs looked pretty banged up, but I think that might have just been from being exhausted and, and being utilized so much in the play. Um, and and yeah, I mean that's that's a pretty big injury list coming into a divisional opponent with some pretty key guys on there in Jordan Love. Evan Williams, two big names. Jair is another one. So there's a lot there that you need to consider, especially as you're heading into Detroit, um, to go against Detroit. Um, and knowing that you have the bye week on the other side of that as far as what you do. Um, I am going to be taking some questions here in a minute. So if you if you got any questions, feel free to start dropping them. Um, but I am going to just kind of talk about the NFC North a little bit before we get into those questions. So around the North, we saw the Bears lose to the Commanders. Uh, I don't know if you guys watched that. I was watching it. We were kind of eating dinner. Uh, I scared the the I scared the dinner out of my son. I think because I uh, I kind of I was just like screaming. Uh, I could not believe that hell Mary. Uh, I yeah, he was uh, he was very startled that I just randomly started yelling because. Generally, I don't yell like that. Even during Packer games, it's much more like uh, excited cheering, and it's kind of built up where that was just like an out of nowhere for him. So it kind of startled them. But yeah, you love you love to see it though. I, I've seen so many video clips of uh, Bears fans just having their hearts ripped out of their chests off that hill, Mary. Which is, I don't know, it's nice when it's not my team having it happen to. But uh, as far as their opponent this week, they're taking on the Cardinals uh, Sunday afternoon. Lions continue to their domination tour, crushing the Titans 52 to 14. Lions are, who boy. Uh, we're going to get into that later this episode, of course, but uh, and then they play Green Bay, of course, this, this weekend. Vikings lost to the Rams in the Thursday night game. A uh, little, little iffy uh, penalty there at the end with the face mask that didn't get called. Obviously, that should have been called. That was a clear uh, face mask, but I don't know. It sucks when it happens. I mean, honestly, for how expensive or how big of a business the NFL is, it shouldn't happen. Those are the types of things that should not happen in an NFL game. Unfortunately, we see them happen. Uh, unfortunate for them, those are frustrating losses as a fan. Now, it's not like that that law or that miss penalty, you know, nullified any potential when they would have had because of the fact that like they still had to drive the entire field, but it it took away that opportunity for them which is, uh, I don't know, which is tough. And then the Vikings are going to be playing the Colts this Sunday night, who uh, announced that they are starting Joe Flacco as opposed to uh, their quarterback, Anthony Richardson, after Anthony Richardson checked himself out of the game because he was tired last Sunday, which was a pretty interesting topic. One thing, I, uh, one thing that I heard call out about the Lions, every team they've beat this season has lost the following week. So... The, the speculation is that the Lions are just such a physical team that every team is so banged up the next week that they're playing at such a uh, lower capacity than they normally do because the Lions just punch them in the mouth that much. Either way, the Packers have a bye uh, following their, their game against the Lions. So if they were to lose to the Lions, hopefully we don't see that uh, carry over. Because after the bye week, I believe we play the Bears. So you definitely don't want to have that. So... Uh, I just thought that was interesting. Interesting coincidence. But uh, let's, you know, let's let's get into some questions if you got them. Let's uh, let's get this let's question segment rolling. So this segment is brought to you by Legend Larry's. I got a new Legend Larry sign. Looks pretty good. Uh, all season long. All season long. Anytime you're going into Legend Larry's during a Badgers or Packers game, you can get wings for $10 a dozen, which is a stellar deal. Definitely go in there and take advantage of that. If you're not, if you're coming into town for a Packers game, stop in there on Saturday when the Badgers are playing. Go take advantage of it. Uh, I, 
you can't go wrong. Legendary's is phenomenal. I went in there on Friday to get some wings. You might be seeing a little bit of a, a an ad or a commercial dropping on my channel here. I think tomorrow. Uh, so I went on there on Friday to put that together um, and to pick up the sign. So huge thank you to Legendary's uh, for sponsoring this this uh, show all season long. So let's see. Trying to go over some questions just or the comments just to see if I didn't. Uh... Yeah, great. Tom, great call out. Wyatt leads the uh, team with three sacks and he didn't play for a month. He's he's such a great addition to that defense and one that was really missing all season long. The, the presence he brings in the middle and the pressure he can provide in the middle is is something that's just, um, you know, it's something that they just, you, you can't replicate easily. So I'm happy to, uh, I'm happy to see him back and hopefully we can uh, see him kind of get into full steam against Detroit. Chad says, almost halfway through the season, how would you re- rate the team so far? Boy, that's a tough one. So last year at this point, we were, let's see, we're through eight games. What are we right now? Six to two, so we're eight, through eight games. I think last year at this time, we were, what, th- uh, three and five? So to have us be six and two, that's a, it's a pretty nice uh, change from last year. Now, if there was one area that I would like, it would be for one Jordan to obviously be playing the full season so he can kind of get into his rhythm. Thankful that Malik can come in. Um, But I'd also like to see him kind of uh, clean things up a little bit. I don't think the interception that he had last week was solely on his shoulders. I know a lot of people want to be quick to, oh, there Jordan goes, throwing another interception. Defenses get paid to you. I know I'm going to be blue in the face how many times I say that, but the defensive back made a great play. Even the announcers are like, well, you know, sometimes sometimes you can do everything right and things just don't go your way, and that's how it felt that, that time. Now, we've seen plenty of interceptions from Jordan over the years where they are just bad decisions, where he's throwing it into triple coverage and it's just – just bad decisions. That wasn't a bad decision. That was a an outside throw. The defender cut the route. Could it have been there a little bit sooner if you want to get nitpicky? Sure. But we've seen Rodgers throw that, and that happened, you know, plenty of times in his career. Defenders, defenders make plays. It is what it is. Overall, I'm very happy about the season, how it's going so far. Detroit's a powerhouse. I'm interested to see how we stack up there. Um, I wouldn't put too much weight into this game because it is still so early in the season, but you want to see this team at least be competitive against the Lions. It's going to be a tough match, uh, but I am, I'm, you know, looking forward to talking about it because on paper, they don't look like they're that separated. So we'll get into that, but uh, yeah, so far so good. I'm, I'm very impressed. I'm happy they're six and two and I, anytime you can get a win, whether it's a ugly win or a pretty win, I'm happy. Oh, Frankie, who is dead to me. Uh, (laughs) Good to see you, Frankie. Uh, He says, what's your favorite interaction you had with a player or coach back when you used to go get autographs? Favorite interaction. Man, I've had, over the years, I've I've met so many players that have just been so awesome. Uh, I've been fortunate to get to know so many players over the years whether it's through uh, initially through autograph sessions and it kind of grows into a relationship beyond that or just, you know, organically through Desmond, I've gotten to know a lot of people. I think if I'm thinking about favorite interactions, it always goes back to like the 60s Packers players, the Jerry Kramers, the Dave Robinsons. Uh, I've told this story before on my page. I don't think I've ever mentioned a podcast. I went to Fan Fest in 2010. It was in Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. And I went there with a friend. And I got there early because I was very excited and I wanted to get a good seat and kind of be like right there. And I, so I'm there early. And I see Dave Robinson setting up this like table for his books that he was uh, selling at the time. And I was like a broke college kid, I think. So I didn't, I didn't have any money to buy a book. Uh, but you know, I'm sitting there and he's, no one's talking to him. He's just kind of sitting there doing his thing. 
people are coming in. I don't know if anyone really recognized them or anything, but I have a Packers DVD that I watched a lot. And I, so I recognized him right away. I went up to him and I was like, you know, Hey Dave, um, just wanted to shake your hand. Um, and then I said, Dave, would you mind if I, I took a picture of your Super Bowl ring? Cause he was wearing it and he stops and he goes, yeah, I mind. And I'm like, okay, no worries. And he takes it off and he throws it, like throws it up in the air and I like scramble to catch it. And he goes, put it on and take a picture with me. So I, I put on a pic, uh, put on a, the Super Bowl ring and uh, Dave and I took a picture together. And that was, you know, one of the cooler moments, you know, thinking on it, that's probably one of the first, not the first Packer player I met, but it was one of the first Packer players I met because I was still young and I, I wasn't living over here yet. And I didn't come over here to see anyone. So really set the bar high for the uh, first impressions uh, of meeting a player. Uh, and then Jerry Kramer, anytime you meet Jerry Kramer and anyone who's met Jerry Kramer can attest to this. Jerry is like one of the most down to earth guys. He tells a different story every time I see him. And I've seen him a lot of times, always loves fan interaction, loves telling his stories. And he's just the, the nicest guy you could ever, ever meet. His, his children are super nice. Daniel and Alicia. Uh, I've gotten to talk to both of them over the years, just like on social media um, but yeah, Jerry's always been phenomenal, but that, that Dave Robinson story is definitely top of the list for me. Great question, Frankie. I appreciate that. Um, let's see here. Swag Coda, uh, not Packer related, but I love this segment for Aaron Rodgers Tuesdays. Uh, are you still reading? And if so, what book have you read most recently? Uh, or what are you reading? I clearly didn't read that very well. Sorry about that, Dakota. I'm currently reading Jerry Kramer's book that he just came out with uh, last year. Uh, I still try to read. It's been a little bit more rocky as of late because my son's going to bed a little bit later. So it's been a little bit harder to read. And then I've, I've been playing Nintendo switch at night to kind of ease my mind. Uh, but I'm still reading. And the, uh, the Jerry Kramer uh, book is what I'm on now. But if you have any suggestions, I'm all ears. Uh, I know we talked about that Aaron Rodgers book a little bit. I think on an individual level, um, you know, when we're texting back and forth, but, um, yeah, good question, Dakota. I appreciate that. Uh, Katie, why did your cooking show go away? Katie, good, uh, good question. Uh, before I answer that, I'm going to drop that link again. If you have not entered in the giveaway, if you missed it earlier, um, feel free to enter now. We'll be probably drawing uh, a winner on that here in the next like 10 ish minutes. So, um, once again, if you have entered, don't enter a second time. So, um, appreciate you guys watching. Why did my cooking show go away? To be honest with you, Katie, it was just so much work. Um, I enjoyed it immensely, but it was a lot of work. And because I do everything by myself, my, you know, my wife's very supportive, but I do a lot of stuff like during the day, like on my lunch break at work, cause I work remotely. So I'll do some stuff during the day. Um, and when I had that, I was in a different role too, where I wasn't even working remotely, but it's just so much work, especially like a cooking show where I'm trying to get different angles. And if I had like a camera person, maybe it'd be a little bit easier. Cause it could kind of pan over while I'm continuously cooking. I know one episode I smoked up my whole house because I was trying to get shots while the food was cooking and the food got too hot. Um, and I had to like kill heat and like keep playing with it. And it's just a lot of work. And then editing was, is really difficult. So not saying that it never will come back again, but right now, uh, it's pretty tough. I did just buy the Bart star and cherry star cookbook, uh, which has some fun recipes. So maybe I'll do some stuff like that with that sometime. Um, let's see here, Jenny, good to, good to see you again. Uh, I wasn't worried about you at all. I hope you had fun at the Jacksonville game. I'm sure you're still tired from that. Uh, and it is late, Jenny. It's it's almost my bedtime, that's for sure. But good, appreciate you checking in here. Um, Max, Max, checking in. Max, um, I don't know. I hope you're still watching, but uh, I I definitely miss you at Legend Larry's, man. Max, whenever I go to Legend Larry's, would like make my wing order all pretty, uh, and Max always took care of me well. I hope your new, uh, not new job at this it's not new at this point but i hope your job is going well i know legendaries can be quite stressful i'm sure but it's good to see you when i i stopped in the other day so uh jerry was stoked to meet ben matt good to see you man 
Dude, Matt, Matt's just trying to uh, Matt's just trying to uh, ruffle up everyone here. Who is the greatest quarterback of all time? Easy question. That is an easy question. That would be Brian Bartlett Starr is the uh, the greatest quarterback of all time and the greatest Packer quarterback of all time. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It's tough. It's tough to compare eras, right? Star played an era where it's a lot more run heavy. Rogers statistically is the best Packers quarterback of all time. Brett Favre brought the Packers back uh, or helped bring the Packers back from dead. All of them are the best in their own way. And that's going to be the political answer I give. Um, let's see here. Derek always asks, asks some good questions. So let's see what he's got. Do you think LaFleur co- is a coach of the year candidate? with what he's done with the quarterback situation and another young team, he should be a candidate. If he's not a candidate that, uh, that is criminal at this point. Um, I do think that you're probably going to see Dan Campbell win coach of the year, at least on the pace they're doing with the lions. I don't know. There's probably other good candidates that could win coach of the year, but how he's dominating right now in the NFL. I don't know how, you know, how he doesn't potentially win coach of the year. Matt should certainly be in the conversation, you know, having Malik come in and being able to put together a game plan that plays to his favors uh, or, you know, plays to his strengths is, uh, is really mind blowing to me. The games he could coach. And I I do wonder if you had LaFleur earlier in Rogers career, do they actually win more Super Bowls? I don't know if Rodgers is, uh, you know, if he would put his heels in more on the offense or what, but it just seems like LaFleur can really coach to a strength. Now, I know we had multiple NFC championship opportunities with LaFleur and Rodgers and it didn't pan out. Um, So I don't, I don't know. uh, I don't know what will happen there, but I don't know my hypothetical, uh, whatever, but um, yeah, he should be a candidate for sure. Uh, Max, don't give me hope, man. I'm hoping somewhere down the road I'll be involved with Legend Larry's again. I I'm here for it. The, the next time I come in there, and if I see you work, and I'm going to be very very happy, Max. And I love everyone at at Legend Larry's. You know, Jim takes such good care care of me. Tess, um, I think those are like the two I see week in and week out. There's a guy there, I don't know his name, but he has a War Turtle tattoo, and that's my favorite Pokemon as well. So him and I bond uh, over the War Turtle love. So I would be I'd be stoked to see him back, Max. Um, I definitely wouldn't complain about that. What is your go-to tailgate food or drink that's coming in from Tony? Um, who Tony? Uh, that's a that's a tough one. Um, I mean, how do you just, how do you not do brats? I feel like if I'm tailgating, if I'm out at Lambeau field, I'm a brat kind of guy brats, some chips, uh, some French onion dip. I don't like onions, but I love Dean's French onion dip. So I don't know why that makes sense. Uh, but it's definitely brats. It's gotta be brats. I used to do pulled pork a lot as well. You know, I'd make it ahead of time, uh, and then have it like the aluminum package and, and can, it would like heat it up nice on the grill. Now that I don't, uh, now that I live pretty close, I don't really go down and tailgate anymore because I don't want to pay for parking. So, um, good questions here. Let's let's uh, let's maybe Max appreciate you, man. Uh, appreciate uh, everything you've helped me with over the years as well. Uh, good to see you a couple of weeks ago, and and hope to see you again soon, man. Um, yeah, Dan Quinn. Tony's always coming in here. Tony should be like running this show tony's always got such good uh so many people watching have such good insights you guys should be running the show you guys should have your own podcast not me um (laughs) i see a question up here that i'm gonna have to answer before i i uh go on to the uh, game preview here but or to draw the giveaway post the link one more time we're gonna be drawing the giveaway winner here if you've entered already don't enter again but if you have not done so enter uh i'm gonna be drawing the winner here in a minute so uh dan quinn should be up there as well i agree with that he's done done some great things there's definitely a lot of candidates out there um you know there it'll be interesting to see how the the uh season shapes up 
It's going to be a controversial one. <laughs> Tom says, catch up on your brat or no. Tom, um, I'm sorry to tell you this. I have the palate of a seven-year-old. I put ketchup on my brats. I had brats tonight for supper. I put ketchup on my brats. I know you're not supposed to. I have the palate of a seven-year-old. Uh, you can get at me if you want. My son, who's one, eats more adventurously than I do. It is what it is. I'm not going back. I put ketchup. I put mustard. And then I put pickles. I don't put relish. I put pickles on my brats because I'm a child. All uh, right. Let's see here. Oh, we got Max dropping in a Packer related question. Does uh, Matt LaFleur tr need to trust Malik Willis more? That is a good question, Max. I appreciate that one. If if Malik, assuming he starts Sunday, if Malik starts Sunday, you're going to almost have to put more faith in, in Malik. This Detroit offense is going to be putting up points. Now, unless Malik and the run game can dink and dunk their way down the field to keep the Packers in this game, I think... I think uh, you, you're going to have to allow him to do more. We haven't seen Malik really throw a lot in the games. Not for a lack of uh, not for a lack of opportunities. He's definitely taken snaps and he's looked back, but his first instinct is always to go, you know, run the ball, which I don't necessarily mind. Um, I don't I don't necessarily mind that. You know, you don't want him to just panic and throw the ball which we saw him do in Tennessee a little bit more where he would try to trust his arm a little bit more but uh I don't know you're, you're gonna have to if you want to compete with Detroit I think if Malik does go focus heavy on run and we'll talk about it here in the next segment after I draw this giveaway um but if Malik does go Focus heavy on the run, but you're going to need to try to go punch pu for punch for De with Detroit, and that's going to be a really d difficult thing to do. Um, yeah, he's going to have to. And I don't think – I think Matt trusts him. You know, Matt gave him the ability to can that play to Jaden uh, before the end of the game. So Matt gives him the opportunities. I just think maybe they just want to make sure they're protecting the ball, especially when a game's that close. But great question here. All right, let's uh, let's draw this giveaway here. Um, I gotta excuse me here. I gotta make sure I do this and not not dox anyone's email addresses or anything like that. Um, let me get in here. How's everyone's week going? Uh, another busy week for me. Uh, work the project I'm working on right now has been kicking my tail. I hope I made a little bit of progress on it now, though. So um, let's see here. My job's always interesting though, because there'll be days where I'll I'll work for like eight hours and I'll I'll get nothing done because I'm just stuck in a rut on like fixing a bug. And it makes it so interesting because I, I do web development. So I'll I'll have eight hours of just like a bug that I'm trying to work on that I cannot figure it out. So uh it definitely always makes for an interesting, interesting day. Um all right, share my screen here. Drop these in. One second here. And before I do the giveaway, I do want to say thank you to Nicolay Law. Without Nicolay Law, none of this would be possible. Uh, last week, I did forget to draw the scenario during the live. I did it after the words, and it was Rashawn Gary getting two sacks, which he did not do. So unfortunately, we don't have that bonus one. So we are just drawing one tonight because the Packers won. But all season long, uh, we're going to be doing giveaways every single show. Um, we might open it up a little bit more depending on how... I, I have 40 items to give away. It's kind of banking on some extra stuff for if you know losses happen and, and stuff like that. But um, as of right now, I'm probably going to have extra. So as the you know maybe once we get into playoffs and we see where we're at, maybe we'll start doing some a little bit heavier here. But... Huge thank you to Nicolay Law. Uh, without them, none of this would be possible. So if you do find yourself getting injured and you need an attorney, call Nicolay Law. Um, obviously, you know, 
very thankful to work with them. So here we go. Uh, 20 entries. Uh, I didn't check if there's any duplicates. Let me do that. Just kidding. I don't want to dox anyone. Sorry about that. Um, all right. Here we go. I think we're good. Let's see. What do we got tonight? Oh, is it going to be Heather again? All right, Heather, congratulations. Uh, give me one through 40 up or down, if you could, please. Since Heather just won not long ago and we haven't done a double, let's do it. Let's do one more. Why not? Unless Frankie wins. I saw Frankie, you're close on that one. If Frankie wins, you are eliminated and you do not win. Ooh, I thought. Oh, we're doing, we're doing three. Tully just won as well. Tully, give me one through 40 if you're in here. We're doing three tonight, whatever. We need we need some we need some all right we got a new one Steve give me uh if you're in here Steve give me a one through 40 three winners tonight whatever uh all right I see I see uh Heather I know you're on your alt account 22 up Chad one through 40 and then Steve give me one through 40 up or down please all right. let's see I got Heather 22 up, which 22 is there. I got Chad at 15. And I don't know if Steve's in here or not. If you're not here, unfortunately, uh, the prize gets forfeited. So hopefully you're in here, Steve. If so, give me one through 40 up or down, uh, please. Heather 22 to start on it. And then we cannot forget to draw the scenario. Derek, Derek, if you're if you're here week in and week out like you've been, you'll you'll get one eventually. I know Chad's got a couple now. Um, Heather's gotten a couple now. So people here week in and week out generally are going to get them. Um, Heather, this round you won the 1962 championship photo, which is what Tully just won uh, not long ago. One of my favorite photos of all time. Um, that's a great one. I'll be sure to get that out to you. I still have your address. And then Tully, 15. Can't see it, so it doesn't matter. Steve, you got until the end of the episode to claim your prize. So if you're here, uh, let me know 1 through 40, up or down. We have, ooh, Nick Collins, 8 by 10. Nice nice pick up there, Tully. Um, oh, geez, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to butcher this name, and I'm sorry. Catano? Uh, Is that right? Catano? If so, yeah. If it's not, uh, correct me. Uh, Gatano, there's a form that I drop in the comments uh, every every episode. It's a Google form. You just fill that out quickly, and then it enters in for me to, to grab your information. Uh, so in the future, when I drop it, you'll see it in this section. You'll see, like, it, I don't remember what it says. If it's like, yeah, it's like forms.gle. You just click that, and it takes you to the form to fill out. Um, so that way I can grab a real time who's here. So um, those are the winners. Steve, if you're in here, you're one. You won. Steve um, Egbers, if you're in here, I need one through 40. Uh, up or down, please. Otherwise, if, if you're not here by the end of the episode, sorry, Steve, you'd be forfeiting your prize. So hopefully you're in here. Hopefully you can claim it. Um, but thank you to Nick Laylaw. Without them, uh, this wouldn't be possible. So I'm so appreciative of them. I uh, appreciate you guys uh, as well for being in here every week. Watch him. Not going to spend a ton of time uh, talking about this week's game. Um, there is some stuff that we're going to break down. Uh, it's just, it's, a, it's a lot of hypothetical stuff, which is always a little bit tough, but uh, the six and one lines are coming into Lambeau field to play the six and two Packers, which is going to be a tough one. 325 game and it's a gold package game unfortunately um let's see here the lions only loss this season comes early or in the year against the buccaneers and i was looking at the history this is going to be the 189th meeting between these two and the packers lead the series 107 to 76 losses and seven ties well, that's fine and dandy. Uh, the past is great and all. The, I love history. I love Packers history. But let's let's look at how these two are on paper. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time breaking this down because it's going to be a lot of numbers just thrown at you. 
instead of throwing out the numbers, I'm going to kind of just talk about where they rank in the NFL. So their offensive averages, total yards, they're sixth in the NFL, the Lions are. Passing yards, they're 11th. Rushing yards, they're sixth. Points per game, they are first in the NFL, which shouldn't be a surprise. They've had two games where they absolutely beat the brakes off the teams they're playing. Packers on the other side. Total yards, they're fifth. So the Lions are sixth. Packers are fifth. Passing yards, the Packers are ninth in the NFL. The Lions are 11th. Rushing yards, the Packers are fifth. The Lions are sixth. And for points, the Packers are sixth where the Lions were first. So when I was like breaking this down, I was pretty surprised at the see, to see that the Packers offensively were higher than the Lions in every single category except for total points scored on average, which is, I, I don't know. I guess when I see the numbers that they're putting up, I, I just couldn't believe that because of the fact that they are putting up so, so many big games. Now, I don't watch a lot of Lions football. I, I don't mind the Lions, but I just don't watch a lot of the Lions football, so defensively now this is where things get a little bit more interesting so total yards allowed the lines are 20th in the nfl uh passing yards allowed 27th rushing yards allowed fifth points allowed per game eighth now we see their passing yards allowed their 27th ranked don't let that fool you don't let that deceive you that is by no means an indication of their pass defense that is an indication of the fact that they've been up so big in games that teams haven't been able to run against them because there's no time to run against them. Uh, teams are trying to pass to try to catch up on them, and the Lions do such a good job of making teams one-dimensional, which plays to their favor. We see that here. Rush yards allowed, fifth in the NFL. Teams just aren't running. They don't have time to run. They need to pass, which is why you see the 27th ranked uh, passing. Packers on the other side, pretty even of the road. Uh, total yards allowed, 15th. Passing, 14th. Rushing, 10th and points allowed 20, uh, their 12th in the NFL. So the Packers are kind of middle of the road. It's going to be a tough one. The Lions uh, turnover differential is plus 10. They don't really give the ball away, only giving it away 15 times while they've uh, taken it away. They've only given it away five times while they've taken it away 15 times, and the Packers are plus seven. Uh, they've generated 19 takeaways, but they've also given it away 12 times. So those are kind of the numbers. Uh, as far as where they're ranking now if i'm if i'm the packers one you have a tough conversation you have jordan love who ha suffered the groin injury that brought him out of the game on sunday would i as the packers if love isn't 100 percent now players never going to be 100 percent this point in the game or in the point this point in the season but it if Jordan Love is not in a position where he can fully run, if he can fully, we saw him struggle to even hand off the ball to Jacobs. He was having issues with mobility. If Love is at that point where he's still moving, not like you'd want, do you rest him for another week? Let him have the bye week as well and hopefully come back in a really good spot for the bears or do you go into this nfc north divisional game you're already and one in the division because you lost to the vikings in a year that's going to probably have a lot of tiebreakers do you start malik and hope that you can eke out a win by just taking care of the ball and controlling the time of possession that is a really tough dilemma the Packers have. I'm glad I'm not the one making it. They're obviously going to assess Jordan as the week goes on, and there's going to be a lot there. So that's uh, I don't I don't know what I would do. Um, to be to be honest with you, I'm probably a little bit more conservative. I'd probably say rest Jordan for a week, play after the bye week, and hope that we can come back because it is um, it is going to be a long season. Steve, Steve, you made me nervous, man. Uh, I'm glad you're here. Uh, congratulations. Give me give me one through 40, please, up or down, so we can draw your item as well. Um, Tom brings up another good point here. If, if McKenzie is medically clearing him, then he's more than good. Um, yeah, I mean, the Packers have a very conservative training staff for a reason, right? Um, 
you know, I, I do trust McKenzie's diagnosis. If he clears and we're good to go uh, for sure. Um, so we we'll see what happens. I, I don't know what the answer is. I don't know. I don't know if I'd rather start a fully healthy Malik. The tough part, like we talked about with Max question, Max's question is if the Packers get in a hole, we haven't seen Malik as quarterback when the Packers are in a hole. His quarterback strength is um, Steve. I think 10's already been gone. So if you can give me an up or a down, that'd be greatly appreciated as well. Um, you know, Malik's able to play really well when the games, when they're up in the game or when it's early in the game. So he can control with the, the run and they can keep extending plays that way. So it'd be interesting to see what would happen if he did found him, find himself in a hole. All right, Steve. 10 up, which 10 was gone. I think, I don't remember who took 10. 10 was taken not long ago. Steve, you got 14. That's where we're next up on the list. So let's see what Steve got. Uh, I'll be sending out an email tomorrow to you, Steve, so I can get this shipped out to you. I won't ship it out this week. It'll be shipped out next week, just so you guys know. Heather and Steve. Uh, Chad, I'll give you yours in person. So. Steve, you got yourself a Robert Brooks 8x10. You can't see it because my camera doesn't have autofocus right now, uh, how it's set up. But you got yourself a Robert Brooks 8x10, so congratulations. Um, I'll shoot you an email either tomorrow or uh, Thursday with your address so I can get that out to you next week. Congratulations. Thanks for watching. But, you know, either way, no matter if it's Malik or if it's Jordan, the Packers just cannot be careless with the ball. The Packers need to, to take care of the ball. They need to be on the other side of the turnover differential. Uh, we cannot afford to be in a negative one, negative two, negative three, like we've seen. You know, we were negative three against the Texans. Um, you, you just cannot afford that, especially going against a team like the Lions. If you give them opportunities and extra opportunities at that, they're going to make you pay. And this is going to be a tall task for this Packers team come Sunday. As always, I have faith in my in my Packers team that uh, that they can get the job done. It's just going to be a very difficult one. I will never say that the Packers have no chance of winning. Any given Sunday is a term for a reason, uh, but I'm going to guess that the Lions are going to be favored just because they've been so dominant as of late in the NFL. Uh, and, and Chad brings up a great point. The weather might play. I don't know, though. Detroit has an incredible uh, run game as well. But either way, the weather could play good to uh, the advantage. Just, you know, one one part um, with that is the Packers might come into the game, especially early on, having the appropriate cleats. Where the Detroit, because they play in a dome, they might not come prepared, and we might see them slipping a bit more. That could really come into the Packers' favor, especially if they can get a a turnover or two to start um, the game out. Tom says Detroit's negative four and a half right now. Uh, so yeah, you know it is it is what it is. You know you can't we can't control it as fans. We can just enjoy the the game, right? We can just enjoy the moment. As I've uh, gotten older, I've realized that I can't do anything about the games. I don't, I don't work myself up. I still watch the games. I still love the games. I still get the adrenaline and the stress from the games. But if the Packers lose, you know my week's not ruined. It doesn't it doesn't uh, impact my life much except for you know seeing and having to deal with some of the fans on my social media pages uh, and the overreactions from a lot of a lot of fans. But other than that, man, like. I have a house over my head. I have a family that's healthy. I have uh, a, a great job. I am very grateful. I love the Packers. I'm so happy when they win, but I will never be the one that lets the Packers loss like ruin my week or control my, my feelings and how I act to people around me or anything like that. So once I kind of came to that realization as an adult, I, I feel like I enjoy football a lot more because I just don't, I don't stress about it as much and like wind myself up about it as much. I can't control it. I just enjoy it. Um, yes, that's a good mentality to have there, Chad. Win or lose, going to have a good time being at Lambeau. You're going to be, you might see Chad on TV. He's going to be row one, right, Chad? Row one. You're going to be in Lambeau Leap section. So I hope you catch a player. Um, and I I cannot uh, I cannot wait to see it. Let's Let's end this week like we always do. 
let's talk about like our fun little story, fun little fact for you of the week uh, before I go upstairs and get ready for bed because I'm an old man. So this week, um, this week, I was curious, have you ever wondered why the Packers, why Packer fans wear a wedge of cheese on their head? Uh, to Packer games or other Wisconsin sporting events, mostly Packers games at this point, but you do see them out and about every once in a while. So if you've ever wondered why the Packer fans wear cheese wedges on their heads, it actually goes back to the 80s. So back in the 80s, Bears fans would uh, ridicule Packers fans and call them cheese heads uh, as an insult because Wisconsin was well known for their you know, their cheese production, well known as the dairy state and Packer fans were known or Wisconsin fans in general, Wisconsin residents were known for their love of cheese. Well, one fan, Ralph Bruno, he decided he was going to proudly be a cheese head while helping his mother reupholster a couch. He noticed the foam inside the couch cushion looked kind of like cheese and he had an idea he decided he was going to cut this couch foam into a wedge, uh, into a big triangle. He burned holes into it, and then he painted it uh, yellow, made a spot for it to go onto his head, and made the first ever cheese head. Well, he enjoyed it so much, he attended a Brewers game shortly thereafter where he wore his newly made cheese head to the game. And it was an immediate hit among Brewers fans, Wisconsin residents, resulting in people asking where they could get one. Ralph took this idea and ran with it uh, and started the company Foamation in Milwaukee, which was recently purchased by the Packers in 2023. Super, uh, super interesting to see where where this came from. My, my wife and I, uh, my wife and I actually went to the factory formation in Milwaukee. I want to say back in like 2019, they used to do tours where you could pay so much and you would tour their factory. And then as part of your admission, you would get to make your own cheese item. So my wife and I actually got to see the original cheese head. They had it there in a vault thing uh, that you could see. We got to meet Ralph Bruno, super nice guy. It was really a fun experience to be able to see him and, and hear his story and talk to him a bit. And then we each got to make a cheese head, which we still have. What's interesting is the ones we made are almost like different material than the ones you can get in store. Uh, they're a little bit like softer and not as like kind of dense, but it was a really fun experience. I don't think they do that. Uh, I don't think they do that anymore. Like after, I don't know if it was after the pandemic that they stopped doing it or uh, once the Packers purchased them, if they just stopped doing that altogether. But it was a, a really fun experience that uh, I wish you guys could have as well. Um, one one last question before I roll out of here. Um, is the uh, trolley tour worth it? I've never personally paid for the trolley tour. You can do the Heritage Trail if you have your own vehicle, if you have a rental car. You do not need to pay anyone like a trolley to to drive you around the heritage trail is incredible um it's it's so much history filled it brings you all over green bay um i i absolutely love doing the trail uh, even now i'll still go drive around go to different places on it because there is so much history and it just takes you around if you do have a rental car i would advise you to do that or if you're own, your own personal vehicle um, I can't speak on if the trolley tour is worth it because I've just never done it. I've always just taken my own personal vehicle. Seeing the spots are really cool. I just don't know what the trolley. Uh, I don't know what the trolley does for it. So, um, yeah, Corey, glad you appreciate it. I hope Logan learned something as well. So, um, really cool. But thank you guys all for watching. I've seen a couple of new faces in here, uh, including Logan. Not that yet yeah, you're able to comment in here, Logan, but I appreciate you being in here. Um, yeah, I appreciate you guys hanging out for another week. It's fun to see some new faces, fun to see the uh, the familiar faces like we got on the ticker. So appreciate you being here week in and week out. I look forward to talking to you guys next week, next Tuesday, same time, same place. Um, oh, 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 before we go, you guys almost let me forget. We got to draw this scenario. Uh, I got to draw a scenario, then we're, I got to get out of here. I'm already running late. 
my wife's going to be wondering what took me so long. Uh, she's probably waiting on me to go to bed as well. Um, all right, let's draw a scenario for this week against the Lions. So if this happens, then we are going to do an extra giveaway next week. Let's see what we got. Um, let's try to keep it modest. Hopefully it's something a little bit more modest so we can get one. Eric might be out. So let's let's do one more. I'm not sure about Eric's playing status, and I don't want to uh, put it. Can we stop with this confetti that's slowing everything down here? My goodness. Let's do one more. I'm not sure if Eric's going to be uh, playing or not, and I don't want to put the scenario on that. Ooh, this one could have a good chance of hitting Josh Jacobs two plus rushing touchdowns. So if that happens against Detroit, whether it's a uh, win or a loss, we are going to do a vi uh, bonus giveaway. So uh, two rushing touchdowns against uh, Detroit. I think Josh has that in him. So thank you guys for watching. I look forward to seeing you next week, next Tuesday, same time, same place. As always, go Pack Go, and we will see you then. I hope you have a good rest of your week. Uh, yeah, go Pack Go. See you then.